All right, so we are skipping section R6, and we're going right to R7, and it's called rational expressions. I do have to collect the homework. Uh, let's do that at the end of the period, okay, since I got everything up and ready to go. Is that all right with everybody? All right, so what, do, what in the world does this crazy word rational mean? It's got a little word inside of it, ratio. What's a ratio? Well, it's basically just a fraction. Okay, so that's what this stuff is. Okay, we're dealing with fractions. Okay, there comes a moan over the crowd, right, when I say fractions, because nobody likes fractions. Well, the more you do them, everybody, we've started. The more you do fractions, the better you get, as with anything, right? The more you do, you get better and better at it. So hopefully, we're going to learn how to do fractions in here. Uh, let's just go. I don't have this in my notes, but let's go old school, okay, and do some fractions. Let's, um, let's just add some fractions together because we're going to do that. Now, let's just wait. I got an old school problem. I put it in my notes already. I didn't think I did, but let's just talk about this. What in the world is a rational expression? Okay, well, when we talk about these expressions, we're talking about things that have variables and numbers in it. Okay, so we have letters, or you can just have all letters, but you got some letters and you got some numbers. I was talking to somebody the other day, and he's like, man, I hated math because they got rid of the numbers and they put letters. What in the world does that mean? Well, I didn't want to sit there and explain it to him because he's an adult, you know, and he was just making a point about math, not liking math. But variables, letter, or letters, just stand for numbers, okay? They're the same thing as numbers. You just, you work with them, you, you can add letters together, you can multiply, you can divide. All the same things we do with regular numbers that we're used to, we can do with letters. So really there's no, there's not a whole lot of difference. And that's what we're basically gonna do today. We're gonna learn how to do some stuff with letters and numbers, but we're gonna do some things with fractions. So let's take a look at just some quick examples of uh, rational expressions. I'm not really doing anything with these. I'm just showing you what a rational expression is. It's just a combination of letters, numbers, addition, subtraction, but it's a rational, it's a ratio. Ratio means it's a fraction, like two over three. We're comparing two to three, right? You've seen that before, right? Two to three, sometimes you do this. Do you remember doing that? Put a colon there. Okay, it's basically the same kind of thing. So a ratio is really a fraction. So is this a ratio? Yeah, absolutely. What? what did you say the two dots were for this? And don't worry about that. It's just a colon. But oh, colon. yeah, that was just review. But this is a fraction. This is a ratio. All right. And that's why they call it a rational, because you got that word ratio inside of there. It's a rational expression. There, it's not an equation. Why is it not an equation? Because what does an equation have to have? It's in that word, an equal sign. That's right. An equation has to have an equal sign. This really doesn't have an equal sign. Okay, we're not solving for anything. It's just a fraction. Okay, let's show you a couple more. This is also a rational expression. We're not really going to do anything with it right now. We're going to do some stuff with this later on, but that's also a, um, a rational expression. There's a couple more. You could look at them in the book. It's really not that super important. But when you see stuff that looks like this, that's a rational expression, all right? You're really not going to simplify it. There's nothing you can really do to these. Um, it's just a rational expression. That's all I'm showing you. But let's do talk about this. Let's talk about the names of things. All the stuff that's on top of this division bar right here, because that's division, right? This, this means divide. All the stuff that's on top, it has a special name. Do you remember what that name is? I'm going to put it right here, actually, so I have some room. What's it called? A numerator. Very good. So that's a numerator. All right. And the thing on the bottom is called the what? Talk to me. The denominator. All right. Yeah. So you learned this stuff, didn't you? Learned this probably in elementary school, and you've learned it probably every math class since. You got the top as a numerator and the bottom as a denominator. Now, there's one thing special about the denominator when you have a fraction. Does anybody know what that is? We've actually talked about that. We talked briefly about, what did we talk about? Um, 
I can't think of the word. <laughs> oh, I can see the problem in my head. Um, anyway, I'll probably, I'll probably think of it when I'm not trying to think of it. But there's got to be something that's true about this denominator right here. So what can the denominator not be? It can't be zero. Okay, so the denominator cannot equal zero because you can't divide by zero. Try it in your calculator. Put any number and then hit divide by zero. Who's got a calculator out? Anybody got one out with them real quick? I'll just tell you right now, if you don't have one, if you, right, it says error. Okay, it's basically what it says. It just says error. You can't do it. You cannot divide by zero. We could go and through and talk about why that's true, but I'm not going to do that right now because we've got other things to talk about. So that's enough about rational expressions. Let's do a problem. This is example one, right in the book. And what it says, it says to reduce to lowest terms. You've probably heard that a million times when you're dealing with fractions. You know, with just regular numbers. So for instance, um, like four over six, would you leave your answer four over six if, this, if you did this on a quiz or a test or something? No, because what does your teacher said from fifth grade, fourth grade, whatever it was, they taught this all up. They always say to what? Reduce or simplify. Okay, same thing, reduce or simplify. So how do you simplify this? What number divides evenly into both of these? Two does, so two divides into four, two times, Two divides into six, three times. So instead of writing four sixths, you would write two thirds. Everybody see that? All right, we're going to do basically the same kind of thing, except we're going to do it with these things called rational expressions. So the first one they give you is pretty simple. It's going to incorporate some of that factoring that we just finished. All right, so just because we finished R5 does not mean we finished factoring. Really, through the rest of this book, probably. Um, you're going to see factoring pop up every once in a while. Okay, So we're not done with it just because we finished a little section on factoring. So here's what it says, reduce to lowest terms. So write this problem down. You shouldn't just be sitting there with your arms folded just watching. You should be writing this down. This is interactive. So it's x squared plus 3x plus 2. That's a weird two right there, but that's a two. That's an x squared. Let me make it look a little nicer. That two is bugging me. There we go. That looks a little better. Now, here's what a lot of people might want to do. Because you know about canceling stuff out, right? Yeah? Okay. So you know about canceling stuff out. So for instance, like if I had 3x over x, what could you do to simplify this thing right here? You could cancel out what? The threes, right. The threes cancel out, and you're left with x. You did that in Algebra 1 and every class since then. So right here, can you cancel out the x squareds? I got an x squared on top. I got an x squared on the bottom. Can you cancel those out? Yeah. yeah? All right, let me do this. What if I had 3 plus 2 over 3? What's the answer to this? Justin? Is it? You got a calculator? Stick it in a calculator. Why is it 5 over 3? That's right. That's right. You got to simplify the top first. Okay, 3 plus 2 is what? 5 over 3. So that would be what? 1 and 2 thirds. What's 2 thirds in your calculator? 0.66666, right? Eventually you'll put a 7 on there just to round it up. Okay, is that what? Anybody got a calculator? Did you do that? 3 plus 2 over and then divided by 3? You'll get 1.6666666. Is that the same as just canceling out the 3s and you're left with the 2? You can't do that, can you? So look, when you're adding stuff together, you cannot cancel out. The reason you can cancel out, because this 3 right here, this top 3, is being multiplied by this x. What is this 3 doing on the bottom? Is dividing. What's the opposite of multiplication? division. So when you do opposites, they can cancel each other out. But look at this. 3 plus 2. It's being added to something. Can you cancel out this 3 with this 3? Is addition and division the same or opposite operations of each other? They're not op opposite, are they? So you cannot cancel out the 3s here. That's what a lot of people want to do. 
And on this problem right here, a lot of people want to cancel out the x squared. You can't do it. Why can't you do it? Because that x squared is what's happening to that x squared. It's being what? It's being added to something else, isn't it? Okay, so I cannot cancel out the x squareds. Everybody see that? It's really important. It's a common, common mistake. People that, anybody, I was going to say high school kids, but really, college kids do this too. Anybody does this, okay, if they don't understand about canceling stuff out. When I say cancel, this really divided out. Why did it divide? Because the 3 was being multiplied. Multiplication, division, are opposites of each other, right? They're inverse operations of each other so they can cancel out. Right here, addition and division are not inverses of each other. So what in the world are we going to do with this? If we can't cancel out that stuff right now, what are we going to do? Well, I gave you a big hint. What did I say we have to do on this problem? Nope. You can't add anything together because there's no like terms here. But look at this thing. Look at this thing on the top. We just took a quiz on it. Give me a word. Say it. Factor. That's right. We're going to factor this stuff. Okay. And so that, let's do it. This is, okay, this is a uh, perfect square, isn't it? All right, Christian, remember perfect square? So how is it a perfect square? We can take the square to this, right? We can take the square to this, multiply one times two, double it. Is it the middle one? Yes, it is. So it's a perfect square. I'm just going to write it with two separate parentheses because I want to cancel st some stuff out eventually. So I'm just going to write it x plus two, and x plus 2. It's a perfect square, or you can just think of it as 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 plus 2 is 4, that middle term right there, that middle coefficient. All right, put my little fraction bar thing there. What about this one? Does this one factor? Yeah, this is like one of the easiest factorings you'd ever do. Okay, so you put the x here, the x here. They're both plus, so you put a plus, put a plus. What multiplies to 2 and adds up to be 3? 2 and 1. All right, there you go. So we factored it. Now let's take a look. Now you have multiplication going on, don't you? Do you see this parentheses right here? It's being multiplied by this parentheses. So that parentheses is being multiplied by this parentheses. So are these two down here. So now if you have the same thing on the top, the same thing in a parentheses on the top as you do on the bottom, guess what you can do with them? you can cancel them out or divide them out. Okay, math teachers always say cancel all the time, and that's fine, but you have to realize what you're doing when you're canceling. You're dividing, right? What is this x plus two being done, or what is it doing to this x plus two over here? It's being multiplied. So can you cancel out something that's being multiplied and then divided? Yeah, you can, okay? Do you have something on the top that's the same as something on the bottom? Absolutely, the x plus two. So this x plus two cancels with this x plus 2. That's where your canceling happens. So what are you left with then? This other x plus 2 over x plus 1. You don't even have to put it in parentheses at this point because nothing else is happening to it. If you want to, you can. It wouldn't be wrong, but there's no reason for it. And then we just leave it like that. And now it's reduced. So the first thing you look for okay, is you look to see if you can factor stuff on the top and see if the stuff can reduce. That's what you're doing with reduced to lowest terms. What do you think? We good with that? Yeah. All right. I took a lot of time to explain that. A lot of time. A lot longer than I should. But So I'm going to go a little bit quicker on some of these other ones. Let's do this one. Again, it's the same thing. Reduced to lowest terms. Okay, I'm not going to write that every single time. Now you should recognize this because we just did this the other day. Like on Monday, didn't we? Because that's what you had a homework on. You're going to turn it in at the end of class. Yeah. Can you cancel out the x cubes? It looks like you can because you got an x cubed on top and an x cubed on the bottom. But you can't. All right, I'll answer for you, okay? You cannot cancel out these x cubes. Why not? Because this x cubed is being subtracted by something, okay? And division and subtraction are not inverses of each other. Everybody got that? You can only cancel out if it's being multiplied by something else. All right, is this x cubed being multiplied by the eight? No, so you can't cancel them out. All right, so what can we do? Same thing we do here. We can factor this. This is now 
It's one of our special ones. We did it on Monday. You just did a homework on it. What's it called? It's the difference of two cubes, right? The difference of two cubes. And how do we do that? We put our parentheses. I'm not going to go through and teach you how to do this again because we did that on Monday. And let's figure out what's in here. Let's do, this, let's do the signs first. Same opposite positive. Same opposite positive. And then you put the two things that are being cubed. What's being cubed here? An x. So you put an x right there. What's being cubed to give you 8? 2. Right. 2 is being cubed, isn't it? So if you want to rewrite it like that, you can. If you want to just think of it in your head, that's fine too. So what's being cubed? A 2. Now, what do you do on the ends right here? You take these two things and square them. Okay? So I take that x and I square it. You take that 2 and you square it. What, what do you get when you square 2? That's a 4. Now, how do you find that middle one? What do you do with these two things? Just multiply them together. Don't add them. Multiply them together. So it's... Um, it's 2 times x, which is 2x. Forget the negative right here. Just look at because we already put the signs in, right? Because we know that's going to be positive. Why? Because the same opposite positive, okay? It's pretty easy to factor, isn't it? Yeah, okay? There's a difference of two cubes. At first, they look like it's really hard, but once you learn a little pattern to it, it's really not too bad. Sometimes I have a tendency to always say that, but i got to remember, I am the math teacher. I've been doing this for like 40 years, okay? So... You know, when I think it's not too bad, when you first learn it, maybe it is too bad. <laughs> I don't know. But um, I'll try not to say that too much. Let's take a look at this. Is this a, like a, a special one of those things? It's not. But I do have something in common. Always, always look to see if there's something in common. That's the first thing I do. When I see two, see two things like this, I see if there's any common factors. Is there anything in common with this x cubed and this 2x squared? an x squared. So we factor out an x squared. Again, we've taught this lesson before. I'm not going to go through all that stuff. So if we factor out an x squared, what am I left with? x minus just a 2. Okay? Now, why did we do all that stuff? It didn't even say to factor, did it? But we had to know, in order to reduce, in order to cancel stuff out, we had to make this into factors. So we had things that are being multiplied together. Now take a look at it. Now what can we do with this? Cancel out the x minus 2s. That's right. Okay. Why can I do it now and I couldn't cancel out the x squareds up here? Because this x minus 2 is being multiplied by stuff. This x minus 2 is being multiplied by this x squared. So division and multiplication are inverse operations of each other. We can now cancel them out. So I cancel out this x minus 2. I cancel out this x minus 2. Can this x squared and this x squared cancel each other out? No, because this x squared is being added to something else. You cannot cancel that out. Can you factor this? x squared plus 2x plus 4. Is there anything that multiplies to 4? And these are all po positives, right? Anything times something is 4 and they add up to 2? No, nah, because 4 times 1, can I get those to add up to 2? Nope. 2 times 2 is 4, but did they add up to 2? Nope. So I can't factor that, that. You cannot factor that. So you just leave it like this over what? X squared. Again, you cannot cancel out the X squared. I can't say that enough because I've seen it. I've taught this for 30 some years, okay? I've seen students do this all the time. Cancel out the X squared. You can't do it. Why not? Because it's being added to something else. Make sense? And you're like, well, Mr. Hamrick, this thing was being added. That X and that 2 were being added. But we're not just canceling out the Xs. We're canceling out the whole X plus 2. And what's happening to that whole X plus 2? It's being multiplied by something else. See the difference? All right. I'll take your silence as indication that you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but I know better. Um, hopefully, you see what's going on. So we uh, reduce to lowest terms. When you have fractions, we're going to go to something else now. When we have fractions, what was the easiest thing to do with fractions besides reducing stuff? Like multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Out of those four things, what was the easiest thing in your recollection to do with fractions? You think addition was the easiest? I mean, that's fine if you did. I'm not saying you're wrong. What would you say? 
Multiplying by the inverse, you think that was the easiest out of all of them? Yeah. To me, I think just straight up multiplication, to me, was the easiest operation that you do with fractions. Would you agree with that or not? I don't know. You can disagree. That's fine. Okay. You can be wrong. <laughs> just kidding. Um, but in my opinion, I think multiplying. Look, if I did this, if I did, um, if I did that, what's easier, that or this? On this one, what'd you have to do to this? You had to find a what? Common denominator, okay? And then you had to figure out what the numerators were, then you had to add them. On this one, you could just multiply straight across, or what did we just finish doing? We finished reducing, or reducing and canceling things out. What could we do in this situation? Cancel out the twos, what am I left with? One third. Wouldn't you agree that that's a lot easier than adding these fractions together? Yeah, okay, my point is, I don't know why I went through all that. My point is, the first thing that they do on these rational expressions is show you how to multiply and divide before they show you how to add and subtract, okay? Because it's a little easier, all right? Does that make sense? So let's do a multiplication. Let's do kind of like a real, real general one. So this is multiplication. If I had A times B, or A over B, sorry, times C over D, and I ask you to multiply those together, Okay, is there anything that cancels out here? No, because you don't have the same thing. I mean, at least you don't know if you have the same thing, because they're variables, you don't know what they are. They could be anything, couldn't they? All right, they could be all ones if you wanted, I don't know. But anyway, you can't cancel anything out right now, so what do you do if you can't cancel anything out? What do you do with the top? Just multiply it across, easy as that. What do you get when you get the bottom? Multiply across the bottom and you get BD. So that's how you do it. You guys sleeping already? My goodness. Christian, Renee, come on now. Eyes up. Come on. Stand up if you need to. Shake it out a little bit. It is a little warm in here. I get it. But the lights are on at least, right? That helps a little bit. Just imagine if the, uh, I don't know. I'm working up a sweat doing all this math. Are you? <laughs> all right. So that's multiplication. Okay, that's multiplication. So what's the next thing we're going to do? Division. We've already done this. We've actually done a little bit of this. A over B over C over D. Matt, was it you saying you like doing this? Okay, you said this was easy? Okay. All right, so do you remember how to do division? We've done this before. Remember this big old bar right here? What does that mean? That means divide. So division, would you guys say you guys have something for it? Would, keep, change can, flip. keep, change, flip. Is that what it is? I, I don't know why I can't remember that. <laughs> keep, change, and flip. So you keep this the same, okay? You change this from division to what? Multiplication, and then you flip this thing right here. Keep, change, flip. It's not KFC, but it's KCF, Kentucky Chicken Fried, okay? So... It's, and then you flip this, so it's D over C. And now you've turned, because really you never divide fractions, do you? You'll always turn division into what? Into multiplication. So now we multiply across, that would be A times D, and the, the bottom would be B times C. Everybody with me on that? Pretty simple. That's real, real basic multiplication division of fractions. But now we're going to do rational fractions, which means you got letters and numbers and they're being added and subtracted and all that good stuff. You could have squares, you could have all that kind of stuff. All right, so let's do example three. So example three, and they give you two parts. This is part A, all right? So here's the first example for part A. All right, it's kind of long, write it down. It's in the book if you have your book open, but I'll write it up here and that's over x cubed plus x. I hope you remember how to factor stuff because that's really, really going to come into play here. That's why they did the factoring in R5. And hopefully you remember how to do it. All right, there we go. Look at all this mess. 
It's a multiplication problem, isn't it? Am I just going to take the top and multiply it to by the bottom? Or I'm sorry, the top of this one times the top of this one like we did on that A, B, C, D thing? No. What do you think I'm going to do with this stuff right here? We just finished doing it in the other problem. Give me a word. Factor. That's right. We're going to factor. Okay, so I'm going to put a little equal sign here. Put a little division there. Put a dot. Put another division right there. All right, let's factor this. They don't make these really hard. They make them pretty easy. It's one. Now, you got a minus right here, right? So what are your signs going to be? They got to multiply to be positive, right? They got to multiply to be a one. Can you get a two and a one to multiply to be a one? No, it's just one and one. One's going to be positive and one's going to, I'm sorry, I lied. They're both going to be negative. How do I know they're both going to be negative? Because they have to multiply to be a positive one, and they have to add up to be a negative two. So you got to have both of them negative. Okay? So I'm going to put a one here and a one here. What about the bottom? That's not one of our special ones. That's just a common factor. So you can factor out an x. If I factor out an x, I get an x squared plus one. I'm going kind of quick because I've already taught you factoring, right? You should already know how to do it. What about this one right here? I'm going to factor out a 4. What's left? x squared plus 1. And this right here, this is a trinomial factoring, so I'm going to put my parentheses. I'm going to put my x's. Now, it multiplies to be a negative. So what are my signs going to be? One's going to be plus and one's going to be minus because they multiply to be negative 2. Now, let's see what numbers. They multiply to be negative 2, but they add up to be positive 1. Why do I know positive 1? Because of that coefficient right there. So, what do you think? 2 and 1 is my only option, isn't it? But I do have another option, whether which one is the positive. Is the 2 positive or the 1 positive? The 2 is positive because when I add them up, i got to get a positive 1 out of it. See it? So it multiplies to be negative 2, and they add up to be positive 1. All right, I did all that. My goodness, that's like four problems in one, and I haven't even done the multiplication yet, right? But they were easy factorings, don't you think? Yeah, they weren't too bad. They were like little baby factorings. All right, so now, what can we do here to reduce it? Because this whole thing says, well, it doesn't say to reduce, but we always have to reduce. Justin, what do you think? Okay, good. So see this x squared plus 1? It's being multiplied, isn't it? Because it's in parentheses, it's being multiplied by 4. So that means I can cancel it out. So this x minus or x plus 1 cancels with this x plus 1 down here. That's also being multiplied, right? So they're allowed to cancel out. Got it? See, this x squared right here and this x squared couldn't cancel out. Even though this was being multiplied by the 4, this whole thing was being added to something and this was being added to something. So you could not cancel those out right there. Is there anything else that cancels out? An x minus one. It doesn't matter which one of these, they're both the same, so I'll just get rid of this one. That one and this one cancel out. Is there anything else? That's it. I got an x minus one on top, there's no more x minus ones on the bottom. I got a four on top, I don't have anything down the bottom to cancel that out with, so how do I write it? What's left on top? A four and an x plus one. What am I? What am I going to write first? The 4. That's the best way to write it. If you put x minus 1 times 4, that's fine. It just doesn't look proper, you know? This looks proper right here. Nothing else on the top. What else is on the bottom? I got an x and an x plus 2. So I'm just going to write it like this. You don't have to multiply it through. You do not have to distribute this. In fact, I think in the book, it even says somewhere, it might even say in the instructions. I, don't, I can't remember. I don't have the book in front of me. But it's, I think it says, um, just write it as factors or something like that. I forget what it says. But that's how you write it right there. You do not have to multiply that out. Okay, just keep it like that. Just saves you a step. You could if you wanted to. It wouldn't be wrong. So you could have written 4x minus 4 over x squared plus 2x. If you would have written that, you'd still get credit for it. It's just one extra thing you had to do that you didn't have to do. Make sense? All right. Let's do uh, 3B. If I went too fast for you, watch it on the video tonight. It'll be up there. Example 3B. 
So we just did a multiplication problem. What do you think we're going to do now? Division. Division problem. Okay, so let's do that. So it's x plus 3 over x squared minus 4. And then you got this big old division sign right here. And you got a b bunch of stuff down here. Probably looking at this and like, you got to be kidding me. I don't know what to do with this. Yeah, you do. We just finished. Well, we could factor, but let's do something first. What's the thing? You know, if you go back to that problem where we did the first division problem, what did we do first? We changed this. Keep what? Change and flip before I start factoring anything. Now, if you wanted to, you're going to have to factor eventually. If you wanted to do it now, feel free, but I wouldn't. Okay, I would keep change and flip right now. Okay, so let's keep this the same. Tell you what, since I got this fancy thing. That'll save me from writing it all again, all right? So there's the keep, all right? And then we change, what do we change? From division to multiplication. And then we flip, we flip this thing right here. So that means this goes where? On the top, there's our little division bar. Don't you wish you could do this on your paper? Oops, I shouldn't have, I should have just copied it, sorry. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. All right, so we keep, we changed, and we flipped. There we go. Just so, oops, oh, that was terrible. All right, that's okay. So, so we changed it from a division problem to a multiplication problem. That's the first thing I do when I see division of fractions. It's the first thing I do. Change it to a multiplication problem, because multiplication is a lot easier than division. In fact, we never really divide by fractions, do we? We always change it to multiplication. Say it again. Did I notice what? Did, did you know about I didn't know that word. I always say multiply by the reciprocal or multiply by the inverse. That's my phrase. It's not as cute, right? It's not as fun, but it's the same thing. Okay, multiply by the reciprocal. That's how I always used to say it, but I kind of like keep, keep change flip. I've never heard that before. Um, it seems like you guys remember that. Remember better than I do, all right, apparently. So let's do this. Now, what are we going to do now? Let's factor. Can you factor every one of these? No, that x plus 3, you can't factor that, so I'm just going to keep it x plus 3. I don't know why that little pink thing that says anchor always pops up all the time. I don't know. What about this thing right here, x squared minus 4? Can you factor that? Yeah, it's a difference of, talk to me, 2 squares. Difference of 2 squares. So you put an x here, an x here, put a plus, you put a minus. What's squared to give you 4? 2 and two, that's easy. Isn't that the easiest factoring, difference of two squares? Christian, would you agree? You gotta stay with me, man, come on. Even turn the lights on so you can stay awake. What about this? We just did one of these, didn't we? In fact, we did the same exact one. All right, so let's see if we remember how to do this. Extend that out a little bit. All right, same opposite positive, so same opposite positive. Put an X and a what? Two. Put an x squared and a what? 4, and then you multiply them, you get a 2x. Yep, we did it. I don't have to go through that again. Here's just a regular trinomial factoring. So what multiplies to be negative 12 and adds up to be what? Negative 1. What numbers? Is 12 and 1 going to work? Nope. Is 6 and 2 going to work? Nope. That, you can't get a negative 1 out of that. Is 4 and 3? Yeah, definitely. So which one is what? Negative 4, positive 3. Can you do it that quick in your head? Yeah, you should be able to at this point. All right, so there's your, there's your stuff. If you want to, just to make this look a little bit nicer, this x plus 3 technically is being multiplied by all this. If you want to put that in parentheses, feel free to do that. Now the fun part. I love the canceling part, don't you? Okay, knocking them off, bang, bang. That's what I always say. All right, whoops. See, look, I got so excited I can't even write correctly. All right. What about this x plus 3? Does that cancel out with anything? Sure. This x plus 3 right here. So bang, bang. Okay. We get rid of it. Anything else cancel out? x minus 2. So that x minus 2, bang, bang, with that x minus 2 right there. Anything else cancel out? Nope. Does this 4 and this 4 cancel? 
No, talked about that enough. Not going to say that again. So now let's write our answer. What's left here on top? First of all, can you factor this? No, we had that same exact problem earlier. We decided you can't factor it, so you just keep it, just like that. It won't factor. On the bottom, what's left on the bottom? Well, we got an x plus 2. That's in parentheses. And we have an x minus 4. That's in parentheses. And that is our answer. It's kind of ugly, but that's what it looks like. We good? Possibly. I don't know. The difference of two cubes or sum of two cubes, I really don't know if there's ones we're going to do where you could actually um, uh, factor that further. I have a feeling that, and I can't say for every number. I haven't done every difference of two cubes that there is, okay? But I have a feeling that that probably will not be able to be factored, okay? But if it can, I just said probably. Okay, so if it can, you should always, always factor if it can be factored. All right, this cannot, so we just leave it like that. What do you think? When do we get out of here? Wednesday, 45, yeah. So I really wanted to get to addition and subtraction, but I don't think it's going to happen. So that's what we're going to do next time. So let me give you some problems to work on. Oh, goodness gracious, I didn't write down. Somebody give me a book real quick. Matt, give me your book. That's what I'm going to write down. That's why I need your book. I didn't write down what the homework assignment was. and I, It's on RenWeb, but I don't have it in front of me. No, just stay right here. Uh, I haven't collected that yet. Matt. Why don't you collect it from everybody? Mac's going to collect last night's homework, so make sure you give it to Mac, okay? Okay. All right, let's see. Page 69 and 70. I can't remember what I put on RenWeb. It was probably something like this. Let's go 5 to 34 odds. Looks like a lot, but just doing the odds is not so bad. There it is right there. And this is, this is section R7, part what? Part 1. So make sure... Make sure you write that on your homework. Section R7, part one. Okay, I say that all the time. I'm going to take points off if you don't write that on there because that's my instructions for you. Everybody got it? All right, I'm going to stop recording. And then you guys can uh, go in a minute. Stop recording.